Okay. All right. Oh no. <sighs> Hello, friends. My name is Brandon Dayton. I am your humble narrator, and welcome to Tenertia, an indie platformer by Candescent Games and Section Games. It's uh, an interesting platformer. You play a robot, but that's not the interesting part. Uh, the robot cannot jump. At all. Ever. <laughs> Your method of motion, propulsion even, is uh, rocket jumping. Which I guess is technically a jump, but it's that much cooler because explosion is included. So, we're gonna jump into it. I'll complete the first world, I suppose, and then we'll get to a review. And I hope you guys will enjoy the ride. Currently, there are, um three levels, core, mines, and sewers. I have not completed the mines because it is devastatingly hard, but uh, the core I'm able to replete, complete relatively quickly and without too much pain. So look at our cute little robot guy. He's like uh, Mega Man plus that other little toy thing that's popular in an anime. I don't know what it is. Don't ask me. Here we go. Here's the thing. Douche. You can rocket jump with your right stick, which seems to work pretty well. There's a nice fluid motion to it, and uh, this, your field of vision gets wider as you move faster, which is a really cool thing. There's also a time and a par score, both of which I've beaten this level, so uh, they will pop up at the end if you beat them. So... I rather like uh, the music and the aesthetic. It kind of just reminds me right now of a big junkyard, but uh, the next level has a really more high-tech feel, and I can't wait to see what the sewers look like, to be completely honest. And we got the par, but not the time on that one. That's just fine. A lot of the replayability in this game does come from being able to beat your time and stuff like that. I really love uh, destroying the environment with your missiles as well. Boosh! Boosh! The debris isn't too obstructive. Um, there's a lot of games that are like, let's drop debris down and it'll be fun. And usually it ends up like, I can't fucking move through it. But it's done pretty well in this game. So I do appreciate that. Boosh! I did have a little trouble shooting to the left initially. But that might be my uh, controller, although I've never had the issue in anything that requires smooth motion like Skyrim, so I'm not sure. Maybe my controller's not adept at flicking. I suspect that's the answer. We got the time on the par on there. I really love wall jumping with the rockets and just the method of motion overall. Like, like that. So many platformers have done you know, oh, this block disintegrates behind you, but to have it, you know, yourself be able to blow it up, and, you know, it's your own explosion that gets rid of the block, and I don't know, it, I just find it much more gratifying that way. There is uh, a large degree of difficulty to the game, which might not be completely apparent here, although I did have a difficult time my first time through. And, um, yeah, even if you have played it before, you're ready to go back and play it again because it's one continuous level built together, which is cool. I think it makes a really nice thing to look at as the level with all of its parts as a whole. Ooh. And also, there's the, the speedrunning aspect, which is undeniably invaluable to this game. It is what will keep me coming back forever. I really would love to see all 80 of the levels, but if I'm having trouble in the mines, <laughs> you can just imagine. Um, I mean, some of the puzzles do get easier once you figure them out, obviously, but, you know, some things like this just require dexterity and some reason I'm not able to do, perform it at that time or uh, yeah probably a lot of times but hopefully we'll be able to just blitz through this boosh 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 there we go just 
gotta put your game face on. New mechanics are introduced relatively steadily. Like, you're given a chance to play with them. Like, uh, there's a door switch. And now we've got... We've got more things to worry about, basically. There's laser beams in the mine that, um... You can pass through initially, but if you stay there for more than a couple seconds, they'll hurt you. Which, obviously, is in keeping with the the speed-running feel of the game. Which I don't know if I'm fully capturing at the moment. Just trying to whittle my way through the stage. Okay. Alright! Oh no! Uh, I can't even believe it. But, uh, the beams are... <laughs> That's fucking, like, 50 seconds ago. Okay. The beams are, um able to be walked through, and they're introduced to you much like everything else in a very simple way, but a way that is also uh, comprehensive and doesn't require an excessive tutorial. There are tutorial points where they teach you how to uh, rocket jump and things like that, but overall the game is extremely intuitive, and I appreciate that a whole lot too. Not because I don't like reading, but uh, <laughs> rather because... It, it's good to be able to play a game without reading a whole instruction manual. So here we are at the Recyclops, the boss of this level. And every time I look into this giant gaping maw, I'm just reminded that uh, you should burn your TV, kids. Yaaaaaaah! Listen to TinyBot, kids. Burn your TV. <laughs> oh my god, who's this big guy? What are you doing, bruh? Now, you can't shoot him in the hand, but if you're a boss slash masochist like me, you won't. <laughs> you won't beat the level time if you do shoot, end up shooting him in the hand, which I think is a uh, great motivation not to, but you'll end up restarting quite a few times as a result. Like, I don't know why I couldn't get up that wall this time. My brain is not doing. Go. Oh, fuck me! Go! Go, Tiny Bot! You can do it! Ah! There you go. Boosh! Oh my god. But, I did get a lot of speed up there, so if I can just do that again. No, not, not the part where I slam my fucking face into the rock. Boosh! Boosh. And I shoot these. Up, up, up. Gotta keep going. He's coming! He's coming! Oh, awesome! Oh, I used that uh, bumper at the end to fling myself. I, I just love this game. Boss victory. Absolute bliss. Thank you so much, Candescent Games. Let's get to the review. So, friends, after much deliberation, I have decided to give Inertia a 74 out of 100. Quite the respectable score for an indie game with such a simple mechanic, but I will defend my stance. <laughs> so, for the controls, I gave it an 8 out of 10. It does stick sometimes for me, I'm not sure why. Um, Maybe because you have to make a complete flicking motion, and I wasn't doing that, but uh, it was fixed up once I started making a conscious effort for it. But uh, I don't think I should have to make a conscious effort just to move my character. It should be a little more fluid. The fun factor, I definitely give a 10 out of 10. This game is amazing for speedrunning. Turn it into a drinking game if you want. <laughs> it's just the possibilities really are endless, and... Uh, I, I really think that it could be the next big thing, at least for me. <laughs> the difficulty, I've also given a 10 out of 10. It is an extremely hard game, especially if you're trying to beat the par and level scores for every uh, every section, I should say, because there aren't levels, there are sections of levels, and then, yeah. It's, it's an interesting way to do it, and I really like what they've done. But we'll get to that in level design. Sorry. 
Replayability, I've given a 7 out of 10. I really think that the uh, high score goes a long way in games. People have sort of forgotten about it, and they're like, eh, that's an Atari thing, but this totally brings it with the par scores as well as the uh, the timed aspect, and, you know, you can, you can brag about it, although there is no global scoreboard yet. It is still early access, and I do hope to see one, which uh, would bring this score even higher. Uh, the innovation, I've given an 8 out of 10. I really, really love the rocket jump mechanic. It's It makes for a difficult platformer, an intense platformer, kind of a wonky platformer, but in a completely fun way. I really, really think the innovation is, is strong with this one. The graphics, I've also given an 8 out of 10. Lots of 8s, lots of 10s. <laughs> um... I, I like the aesthetic. I think the little tiny ro robot guy is cool. And uh, the fact that he's a little bit damaged, probably from blasting himself with rockets constantly, is pretty nice. The environments he, mo he ro moves around in are, are really detailed and com pull you in completely because, again, of the level design and how, uh, how they're wrapped around each other and split up into sections. The music, I've given an 8 out of 10. I really, really like the musical part, even though it seems to have dropped out because I sat on the menu too long. <laughs> but um, I think the music is one, one of the strong aspects. There are many, many strong aspects, but the music is among them, even though it is a little bit um, downplayed. I think maybe it should be a little more up-tempo for boss fights and no noticeable. It It seems to be just in the background, which, you know, it is background music, but f to, to win a 10 out of 10, you really have to have me humming it the next day, kind of thing. So, still really good music. The sound effects, oh my god. I've given a 3 out of 10. I just can't stand the repetition of the rocket sound effects and even the lasers and things like that. Just, this start to drain on you after a while, especially if you're running the same level over and over and over and that it might just be me you know some people might be good enough to not even notice the repetition but especially for the rockets I, I think it's something that needs to be looked at to pre preserve the sanity of the gamer <laughs> the story I've given a 1 out of 10 really it doesn't exist currently you're a robot uh, who's running to other giant robots and then running away from the giant robots and nobody really knows why yet although it is is still early access so again this score could easily uh, go up quite a few notches depending on which way they decide to go with it the level design oh the level design I love it <sighs> I give it a 9 out of 10 uh, I really like how it's one big wraparound level, and then it's broken up into tiny little sections for you to speed run. It makes it extremely digestible. It makes it extremely fun, and I I can't get enough of Tenertia. It's gonna stay installed on my computer for a very long time to come, and I'm so grateful that I got the chance to review it. Thank you to Candescent Games. Thank you to everyone who watched this review and/or like, comment, subscribed. So, friends. This has been Tinertia. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I hope that you guys will join me in the next one. Until then, friends. Bye bye! One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.